we're called to do? Are we going to be a people that's peculiar, going against the grain, not like the world? Or are we going to fit into the mold that TV tells us, that the media tells us that we have to fit into? And persecution is, is going to come. And, and Christians, that's actually Bible-believing Christians, are going to be persecuted for what they believe. And, and it's a test. It's a holy trial. And it's God saying, hey, I'm testing you to see if you'll stand up for what you believe in. So here you have these guys. And we're just going to read through the scripture um, chapter 3, and we'll break it down piece by piece. It says, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold, 90 feet high and 9 feet wide, and set it up on the plain of Dura in the province of Babylon. He then summoned the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials to come and dedicate the image he had set up. So the satraps, prefects, governors, advisors, treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the other provincial officials assembled for the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up, and they stood before it. Then the herald loudly proclaimed, this is what you are commanded to do, O peoples, nations and men of every tongue. As soon as you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, zither, lyre, harps, pipes, and all kinds of instruments, you must fall down and worship the image of gold that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. Whoever does not fall down and worship will be immediately thrown in to the fire. See, here's how the world is going to work against us. The enemy comes in. And he starts spewing lies about our past. You're an alcoholic. You're a drug addict. You're a homosexual. You are all these things. He spews all these things in your ear. And he declares to you everything that you're not when you become a child of God. Because Jesus came and he set you free. He set you free. For whom the sun sets free is, is free indeed. You're no longer a slave. But he comes in and he fills you with these lies. And, and, and when we start to believe the lies, here's what we're doing. We're opening up a jail cell. We're walking back in. We're putting the chains on that we've been set free from. And then we sit there dormant and we can't move. Because we're gripped by the lies of the enemy. So he tries to steal your identity because if you know who you are in Christ, then you're powerful. And if you know you're filled with the Spirit, then you know that you don't have to do what the enemy tells you to do because you've been given power to turn away. You've been transformed. You've been made new as we sung today. God didn't make you better. He made you new. We are new creations. We're not patched up dolls. We are new creations. And the world will try to make you worship the creature instead of the creator. I turn on TV. I see all these commercials, all these ideals of what we're supposed to look like as American society. And people fall for it. Christians fall for it. And we have women that's broken because they start to believe that beauty is a matter of the reflection they see, not a condition of the heart. Beauty's not what you see. It's right here. And Christ was the most beautiful person to ever live. And Christ inside of you makes you the most beautiful person to be alive right now. We should praise God that we're alive right now and we have the same one who raised Jesus Christ from the dead, the same spirit living inside of us. We're a powerful people. We're a peculiar people. We are set apart people. We are identified with the creator of the universe. So he tries 
to make you worship the world, the creature instead of the, the creator. He wanted them to fit into the world system instead of stand out. And I was telling the guys in there, God's really laid it on my heart that the church has to be a people that'll stand up, that'll stand up, that won't bow down to what they're telling us we should be. Now, I love the name of your church. It's, it's revolution, and, and there's a few different definitions for it. Just a few that I dug up is a sudden, radical, or complete change. <laughs> Jesus revolutionized your life. So let's keep reading. It says, therefore, as soon as they heard the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, and all kinds of music, all the peoples and nations of men of every tongue fell down and worshiped the image of gold that the king Nebuchadnezzar had set up. At this time, some astrologers came forward and denounced the Jews. They said, King Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You have issued a decree, O king, that everyone who hears the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of music must fall down and worship the image of gold. And that whoever does not fall down and worship will be thrown into the blazing furnace. These guys were some snitches. You see that? They didn't even have anything to do with anything. Like, why wasn't they worshiping? If they would have been bowing down like they were supposed to be, they wouldn't have been looking around worried about everybody else. That's the same thing that's going on with the church. If we was doing what we were supposed to be doing, we'd be affecting everybody else. We'd be changing and transforming our communities. Because we're radically transformed. Man. So it says, furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I have set up? Now when you hear the sound of the horn, flute, zither, lyre, harp, pipes, and all kinds of instruments, if you are ready to fall down and worship the image I made, this is very good. But if you do not worship, you will be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to save you then? See, this is the trial. This is the trial. They were taken from their land, brought into captivity, and now this was the trial. Like now you have to do something different. This is when you have the opportunity to stand up for what you believe. And here they are, standing before the king who could have literally just said one word and had him decapitated. And they're sitting here. And the king says, what God can save you? See, God tests us in a way to where if we allow God to test us and we can trust God the way these guys are about to trust God and we can walk with God through the test, we'll see that the trials that we're put in is actually molding us. It's making us new, new. See, the scripture actually says, when you look at it in the Greek, it says that we are being made new. Being made new is a, a radical transformation, but becoming who you're supposed to be is a process. And here these men are, standing face to face with the king. And it says, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to the king, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the furnace, the God we serve is able to save us from it. And if he will rescue us from your hand, oh God, oh, and he will rescue us from your hand, O oh king. But even if he does not, we want you to know, O oh king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image you have set up. God sends us to impossible situations. 
God puts us in situations where he can receive all the glory. See, it's about to, it's about to reach the pinnacle of this story. Here they are standing before the king. The king's telling them, here, listen, worship, bow down. And if you don't bow down, you're going to be thrown into a fiery furnace. This is the trial. And they look at the king square in his face and they say, we will not worship your God. We will be a people who fits in. Well, we won't fit in, but we will stand out. How many people in the church is ready to be a people who's willing to fit in, not fit in, but stand out? Because there's too many of us fitting in. And here they are, ready to die for what they believe. Man, I won't even, sometimes, I won't even miss a meal at Hardy sometimes. I'm like, God's like fast. I'm like, Hardy's. You know, like, we got a long way to go. I have a long way to go. And don't think I'm here to preach a message at you. Uh, this message is more for me. This does more for me. Does just as much for me. And here they are. Then Nebuchadnezzar was furious with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And his attitude toward them changed. He ordered the furnace to be heated seven times hotter than usual, seven times hotter, man, than usual, and commanded some of the strongest soldiers in the army to tie up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and throw them into a blazing furnace. So these men, wearing their robes, trousers, turbans, and other clothes, were bound. They were bound. They were tied up and thrown into the blazing furnace. The king's command was so urgent that the furnace was so hot, the flames popped out and killed the soldiers who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, firmly tied, fell into the blazing furnace. Hmm. Huh. It says, Then King Nebuchadnezzar leaped to his feet in amazement and asked, he asked his advisors, Weren't there three men that we tied up and threw into the fire? They replied, certainly, O king. He said, look, I see four men walking around in the fire, unbound, unharmed, unharmed, and the fourth looks like the son of God. And Nebuchadnezzar then approached to open, uh, approached to open the blazing furnace and shouted, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, servants of the Most High God, come out, come here. We, we serve a God that will show up in the middle of our trial. Now, I think a lot of us are, are afraid to, to stand up for Jesus because, because we don't know what's going to happen. But if God is for you, as I said before, who can be against you? They're in the trial of their life. They're tossed into a burning furnace and already God starts working. How's God start working? The fire is so hot that it jumps out and it burns the people, kills the people who are going to throw them into the fire. God's already working. See, God's moving when we don't even see God moving. I bet y'all read that scripture a lot of times and didn't look at that as God moving. But God was already moving. So they get into the furnace. And Jesus shows up in the middle of the trial. And, and he don't just stand outside like, huh, I'm the son of God. He gets down and dirty. He gets into the flame. He gets into your addiction. He gets into your pornography. He gets into your pain. He gets into whatever your situation, whatever has you bound. He gets into the mess because he's a God who loves to come down and play in the mess. He loves it. He lives for it. He lived for it and lives for it. And he comes down and King Nebuchadnezzar has a revelation. He prophesies. He says the fourth looks like the Son of God. What? The fourth looks like the Son of God. See, here's the deal. We can either bow down or we can stand up. 
But the fact of the matter is, every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that Jesus is Lord. So here's the deal. If we're not standing up for him now, we're not going to want to bow down when it's time to bow down because that's going to mean that he's pushing us. He's making us bow down. He's making us bow down. And even Nebuchadnezzar, even Nebuchadnezzar starts to prophesy the goodness of who is to come. He says the Son of God came into the trial and he hopped into the furnace and he got in and he put his arms around them when they needed him most and he loved them. He radically loved him, them. That's the God we serve. That is radical love. To jump into a fiery furnace for the people that serve you. Wow. And then it says, so Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego came out of the fire, and the satraps, prefects, governors, and royal advisors crowded around them. They saw that the fire had not harmed their bodies, nor a hair on their heads was singed. Their robes was not scorched. And there was no smell of fire on them. Then King Nebuchadnezzar says, praise be to the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel to rescue the servants. They trusted him and defied the king's command (laughs) and were willing to give up their lives rather than serve or worship any god except for their own god. This is the king who has rule over everything in that kingdom, and he is thanking them for standing up for their God. Because when we stand up for our God, it don't just affect us, it radically affects everybody in our surrounding. You can't be in the presence of Jesus You can't be in the presence of love and not be impacted. And you don't have to be a believer to be impacted by the love of God. And he's in the furnace. And here's what happens. It says that they went in bound. They went in bound. But when they came out, they were completely set free. They went in like this. And they came out like this. They went in like this. And they came out like this. See, when God puts us through the trials, he's not just testing us. He's purifying us. Perseverance builds character. Character molds us to be greater men of women. women, Oh, can't talk. Greater women and men of God. And in the furnace, God does amazing things. Our bondages start to fall off. Our faith starts to grow. Because imagine what that done to their faith. This is a God that they had never, in, probably never encountered in that measure, these guys, as far as we know at this point. And he is in there with them. They seen their God. Imagine what that done for their life when they came out of the furnace because they trusted God enough to go into the furnace and go through the trial. And there's a call on the church to to stand up. There's a call on the church to not bow down to the scheme that the enemy's presenting before us. And if we will be men and women who's willing to stand out God will do great things. He'll do amazing things. It says, therefore, I decree that the people of any nation or language who say anything against the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be cut into pieces 
and their houses be turned into piles of rubble, for no other God can save in this way. No other God. Look, look, no other God can save like our God saves. And this is coming from a non-believer. Aren't you so thankful that our God gets that low, gets on our level with us and walks through life with us? It's a beautiful thing. Then Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they were, they were promoted. See, God turns tragedy into triumph. They didn't just get tossed into the furnace, they got refined. They got set free. Then they got out. And when they got out, they got promoted. He delivered them as the psalm said. They were, they were facing the furnace, the psalm says. They were trampled over, abused, and grabbed by men. Man, they were risking death, not even going to jail, death. But when they came out, they came out abundant, more abundant than they went in. So my message to the church is trust God because sometimes it's hard to see what God is doing, but that's okay. It's okay. Because we don't have to see with these eyes necessarily, as long as we see through eyes of faith. And we trust God. Because we don't have no record of them seeing the Son of God, the angel of the Lord, until the biggest trial came in their life. And I I encourage us as a church, me, as a man of God, to live a life to like continue, of continuous praise. Like when I'm hurting, when I'm sick, when I have the flu, when, I'm, when I feel angry, I want to be able to say, praise God. Why? Because if God is so radical that non-believers give God praise, why am I not giving my God praise all the time? So I'd like to bring up the brothers that's going to usher the communion right now. And um, I'm just going to pray. I'm just going to pray for God to ignite a fire in our hearts. For God to, to move right here, right now, tonight in our hearts. Take away all the fear. Scripture says that perfect love casts out fear. So right now, I pray, Jesus, Holy Spirit, come, Lord Jesus. Manifest your presence. God, I'm asking that your perfect love casts out all fear in this room, in me, in everybody in this room, Lord God. God, we're trusting that you will meet us in the trials. God, we're trusting that you will develop in us a radical heart to worship you, Lord God. God, we'll worship you through the toughest situations, not just when life is good, Lord Jesus. God, we're asking right now, Lord, set our hearts on fire. God, let us be burning flames that runs throughout this life, setting everybody around us on fire. We want to be fire starters. We want to be radical, Lord. We want to believe you, God, to the fullest, that we can be everything that you've called us to be. And God, we want to serve you. And we want to tell people about you, Jesus. God, we want to tell about how you took us and made us new. 
Lord, that you didn't just make us new. You brought us into your house, Lord God. You called us children, Lord God. You said we have access to your kingdom and its riches, Lord God. God, give us a greater revelation of who you are so that we can believe that we are who you say we are, God. We are who you say we are, God, not who the world says we are, not who our friends say we are, not who our parents said we were, Lord, but who you say we are, God, what your scripture, your holy scripture proclaims about us, God, that's who we want to be, a peculiar people willing to stand up when everybody bows down but God not even just a people that stands up but a people that sees people bowing down and gives them a reason to stand up God and we praise you Jesus we thank you Father in Jesus name Amen